considering league position. Undoubtedly profitable in the Premier League, experiencing smaller losses in the League One years, and facing the worst financial performances when the Blades are competing at the top of the Championship. So why did the Blades incur more losses in the Championship than in League One? Welcome to Numbers Behind the Net. Every week, we jump back on the football money trail, diving deep into a club's finances to uncover the state of play off the pitch. This week, we're heading to Yorkshire to explore Sheffield United's financial journey over the past decade. Let's rewind to 2013. United, stationed in the third tier, spent four years in League One, marked by two remarkable semi-final cup runs. Fortune shifted in 2017 with a promotion, sparking a rapid climb up the leagues. Two years later, and it was another level up. The Blades were back in the big time. A fantastic first season in the Premier League, unraveled with second season syndrome, leading to United's relegation in 2021. This decade concludes with the Blades in the playoffs, losing out to eventual winners Nottingham Forest. Impressively, in that middle five year stretch, Sheffield United climbed 46 league places across two divisions. And in the dugout, Bramall Lane witnessed slightly less turnover in managers compared to others we've examined. Just eight different men with the Blades. Wilson, Morgan, Weir, Clough, Adkins, Wilder, Yukanovich, Heckingbottom across two spells. So what unfolded off the pitch? Firstly, Sheffield United adjusted their accounting periods in 2020 and 2021, a response we've seen from other clubs coping with COVID's disruption. So overall, it will balance out in our analysis, so let's proceed to revenue. Sheffield United's case vividly illustrates the step changes in revenue as a team progresses through the divisions. Revenue nearly doubles, transitioning from League One to the Championship, followed by the even greater jumps as reward for top-flight football. The impact of COVID is evident, with the Blades experiencing a dip in their revenues during the second Premier League season. Parachute payments rear their heads once more, with the Blades securing 67 million in revenue the year after relegation, compared to just 22 million in their promotion year. Zooming in on those two years, broadcasting revenue amounted to 8 million in 2019. Fast forward to 2022, and it has surged to 51. The disparities in Premier League and parachute payments become evident when examining revenue by league position. On average, the revenue trajectory is clear. The Blades picked up 3.6 times the revenue they did in the Championship. I'll get our days done and dusted. Go and have a beer. <laughs> now, what about profit? It follows a familiar pattern. Akin to other clubs, Sheffield United consistently records losses in the second and third tiers of English football. Securing promotion in 2019 leads to an immediate rise in bonuses and other costs, further denting profitability. The scenario takes a turn with the infusion of additional Premier League money, reaching its peak in year one, but the Blades still remain profitable as they exit the top flight. Returning to the Championship results in a return to losses. Now observe these clusters when considering league position. Undoubtedly profitable in the Premier League, experiencing smaller losses in the League One year, and facing the worst financial performances when the Blades are competing at the top of the Championship. So why did the Blades incur more losses in the Championship than in League One? We'll be back to profit in just a sec, but if you're enjoying what we do here at Numbers Behind the Net, you'd be helping us out massively if you click that subscribe button and you'll stay up to date with all our latest videos. Cheers for all your support, and now back to the PL. Let's tackle this with our PL walkthrough. So set that timer, fade out the revenue, and let's delve into staff costs. In League One, wage constraints tighten, possibly due to the lesser financial incentives of ascending to the Championship. Once the second tier is reached though, wages start to rise, reaching 78.5 million in 2020. However, with declining performances, the Blades have aimed to control the wage bill, effectively halving it in two years. Percentage-wise, the Blades have controlled spending, keeping wages under 65% of revenue since 2019. And how does this spending on wages translate to points on the pitch? In League One, United spent just 140k in wages for each point on average. In those initial two years in the Championship, this figure does rise to 400k, and that first season in the Premier League was a triumph, with the Blades earning 54 points at under £1.5 million each. The following year wasn't as successful, with 23 points costing an additional million each at 2.5. Post staff cost, though, and Premier League promotion appears transformative once again. Moving on to operating expenses, 
they incrementally rise until the Premier League. There's a spike afterward, but the confluence of differing accounting periods and COVID complicates the analysis. There's not much more to add here, but we can infer that the EBITDA favours Premier League football. Next up, stadium facilities. Costs are minimal, but there is an uptick in 2022. That's partially due to a 1.3 million impairment of the club's land and buildings. It appears that the latest valuation came in below what United were carrying it at, resulting in an incremental hit to the P&L. Lastly, transfer fees. Smaller figures in League One, but it gets very interesting from 2017 onward. The initial championship years see net profit, but following promotion, costs escalate as the Blades build a squad to compete in the Premier League. Despite relegation, we still observe a net cost in 2022. So there we have it. Sheffield United appears to be an example showcasing that profits can be made in the Premier League with an average 13% profit margin over two years. By all means, enjoy it, but enjoy it by being f***ing disciplined here. The now, what about cash? As usual, we're scrutinising the combination of cash from operations and transfer fees. Cash from operations, influenced by EBITDA line items, has one standout figure. What the hell's happening in 2020? In all but one other year, cash flows out from Bramall Lane, but 2020 sees an incredible £105 million coming in. Why is that? Well, remember they had generated a healthy EBITDA of £35 million, but where is that other £70 coming from? Well, first we see £31 million of deferred broadcasting income in 2020. Remember, the end of this season was disrupted by COVID, so the last few games of the season weren't played until the next financial year. Sheffield United had got the cash from the Premier League for those last games, but had not yet earned the income. That would happen next year. On top of that, there are expenses that United had incurred, but had not yet paid. Perhaps renegotiating payment terms or agreeing deferrals to preserve cash in the pandemic. As an example, the amounts owed to the tax man jumped to 16.1 million in 2020. What we can see is most of these timing differences had resolved itself by the end of 2022. Across the last three years, Sheffield United earned £80 million in EBITDA. From a cash side, over that same period, they made £86 million. So it's broadly in line, just the timing is a bit out of whack. There'll always be some difference between profit earned and cash generated due to the timing of payment terms. Now, returning to transfers, it's the opposite. Smaller cash inflows in nearly all years leading up to the Prem and heavy outflows in the top flight as the Blades invest in the playing squad. Those two years tipped the balance to a net 65 and a half million spent on transfers in the decade. The average of those two years in the Prem was 42 million pounds out the door. So where does that leave us? Well, there were a couple of crazy years in the Premier League, but the Blades have ended up spending just eight million over the last 10 years. So have the Blades owners had to find much to fund? Cash has taken out of the club in those beginning years, but funding has continued to ramp up through the Premier League spell and beyond, reaching 82 million net by the end of 2022. Alongside the 7 million, the club has spent 64 million pounds on stadium and facilities. Most of it in 2020 is part of the fallout of the heated takeover battle won by Prince of Dulla in 2019, with the club ordered to buy the stadium and other facilities for 38 million pounds. The consequence of this is Sheffield United have now accumulated significant third party debts with bank loans standing at 63 million in 2022. So what's happened since? On the second attempt, Sheffield United punched their ticket back to the top flight. However, it was back to the future for the Blades as Paul Heckingbottom was replaced by Chris Wilder, who returned to try and steer United to Premier League survival. But more change may be on the cards in the boardroom at Bramall Lane, with Prince of Dulla looking to offload the club. How will this impact the Blades? We'll just have to wait and see. Until next time.